Hi everyone, it's Michael. So I have an awesome problem for you all today. This one was posted by Kaito Shinichi on the Art of Problem Solving Forum. And I really enjoyed solving it. So if you'd like to give it a shot, feel free to pause the video. Alright, so I'm going to go over the solution. So we have a triangle ABC uh, inscribed in a circle with center O and I is the end center. AI meets the circumcircle at E. And K is the reflection of I over BC. And then we let EK meet the circumcircle at F. And we want to show that IOEF is cyclic. All right. So first, I'm going to rephrase the problem a little bit. So I found it a little difficult to work with point K uh, being a reflection of I over BC. So instead, I'm going to re frame it by letting F prime be the point so that IOE F prime is cyclic. So I'm going to let the circumcircle of IOE meet the other circle at point F prime. And now I want to show the reflection of I over BC lies on EF prime. So that's equivalent to the problem. All right. So how do I show the reflection of I over BC lies on EF prime? So uh, one thing to note, we want to figure out how to use the fact that I is the in-center of triangle ABC. And there's a theorem called the in-center x-center lemma, uh, which I don't know if I brought up on my channel before, um, but it says that E is actually the circumcenter of triangle BIC. So it's clear from the figure that E is the midpoint of arc BC. Uh, because it's where the angle bisector meets arc BC. And so the in-center x-center lemma says that E is actually the circumcenter of BIC. Uh, so if you haven't seen this before, I'd recommend trying to prove it. Um, so here's the circle through BI and C, and it's centered at E. All right. And this is also sometimes called the shooting lemma. Sometimes it's called fact five. So there's a couple different names for it but it's, they all say the same thing. All right, so we have three circles now, and so I figured why not try to use the radical axis theorem? But before I use the radical axis theorem, I have to label this point right here. Uh, so I'm gonna label that intersection point D of those two circles. And now the radical axis theorem says that uh, EF prime, BC, and DI have to be concurrent because those are the three pairwise radical axes, okay? So I'm going to draw in the uh, ID, and I'm going to let the point of concurrency be G, okay? So how does this help us solve the problem? Um, so I wanted to show that the reflection of I over BC uh, lies on EF prime, and it's easy to see from this figure that that's the same as saying that angle IGC is equal to angle EGC. So that's my goal here. Okay, so I want to show angle IGC is equal to angle EGC. And now I'm going to use a, something I mentioned on my channel before. So the angle between two chords is half the sum of the intercepted arcs. Um, so I'm going to start with angle EGC. Uh, that's the angle between the chords EF prime and BC. And so it has to be half the sum of arcs F prime B and arcs and arc EC. But arc EC is the same as arc BE because E is the midpoint of arc BC. So I'm going to write this out. So we have angle EGC. Uh, that's the angle between these two chords, BC and EF prime. So it's half of arc F prime B plus arc EC which is half of F prime B plus BE, because arc BE is the same as arc EC. And now we can combine these two arcs, so that's just half of arc F prime E. And F prime E, uh, the measure of that arc is angle F prime OE, because that's a central angle. All right, so we found a way to calculate angle EGC. Now can we figure out how to calculate angle IGC, and can we use the same idea? Okay, um, 
so before I get too much into that, um, we ha we have that, this should be F prime OE, by the way. So EGC, it's half of F prime OE, but that's the vertex angle in an isosceles triangle, because we know that F prime O is equal to OE, because those are both radii. Okay, so we have an isosceles triangle F prime OE here. Um, so what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to create another isosceles triangle similar to it. Um, but in this case, so for F prime OE, two of the sides are radii of the circle centered at O. I'm going to try to create another isosceles triangle that's similar, but where two of the radii are centered at E. So I did a little calculation on the back end, and I figured out that here's how you can do it. So I'm going to let DO uh, meet the circle centered at E at point J. And then triangle DJE obviously has to be isosceles because two of its sides are the radii of the circle. But I claim it's actually similar to triangle F prime OE. And that's valuable um, because we have angle F prime OE here. All right. So here I'm just writing out some stuff that I mentioned. So clearly o pri OF prime is equal to OE because they're both radii of um, the circle centered at O. And ED is equal to EJ because those are both also radii of the same circle. And by an easy angle chase, we can show those are actually similar isosceles triangles um, because angle OF prime E is equal to angle ODE because they're both inscribed in the same circle. And that's equal to angle JDE. So those two triangles, OF prime E and JDE, uh, they both share a common angle that's not the vertex angle. And they're both isosceles triangles, so they have to be similar. All right, so triangle JDE is similar to triangle F prime EO. And how does this help us? Um, so what I realized is there's actually, okay. So we calculated angle EGC as half the sum of the two intercepted arcs. What if we try to do the same thing with angle IGC? So that would be half of arc BD plus half of arc IC. And what if we could take IC and show it were equal to BJ? Then, then that would mean we could combine the, those two arcs, DB and BJ. And so that's what I'm gonna try to do here. Um, so basically, I want to show that arc BJ is equal to arc CI. And I'm going to write out the proof of that here. Um, just draw in a few more segments. But um, it turns out that because we know those two isosceles triangles are similar, uh, it's not hard to show from there that the two triangles OEI and OEJ are actually congruent. All right. So angle OJE, uh, it's equal to angle ODE, because that's JDE is isosceles. And angle ODE is equal to angle OIE. So there's a symmetry here. So angle OJE is equal to angle OIE. And OE is perpendicular to BC. Um, that's clear. And and IE is equal to JE because they're both radii of the circle centered at E. So arc BJ has to equal arc CI. So I'm going to write this out. So we have EI is equal to EJ and angle OJE is equal to angle OIE. Uh, so by symmetry, it's, it's very easy to see that triangle OIE has to be congruent to triangle OJE. Okay. Um, so I haven't fully proven this. Um, but it's, it's very easy to see. So I'll let you try to uh, prove that on your own. All right. So if triangle OIE is equal to triangle OJE and OE is perpendicular to BC, uh, by symmetry, it's easy to see that arc BJ has to equal arc CI. All right. So OE, it's the perpendicular bisector of BC because um, O is the center of the circle and E is the midpoint of arc BC. So from this congruence, you can 
see uh, with some fairly easy um, argument that arc vj is equal to arc ci, okay? And now that's enough to, to try to calculate angle IGC. Um, so I, I'm going to do a little calculation here. So angle IGC, that's also the angle between two chords in the bigger circle centered at E. And so it's half the sum of the two intercepted arcs. So it's half of arc BB plus half of arc CI, okay? Because those are the, the angles between the chords uh, DI and BC. And I just mentioned that arc CI is equal to arc BJ. So this is equal to half of arc DB plus arc BJ. And that's half of arc DJ. Uh, and DJ, half of arc DJ, that's half of angle DEJ because DEJ is a central angle in the circle centered at E, okay? Um, so we have, we wanted to show angle EGC is equal to angle IGC. EGC is half of angle FOE. IGC is half of angle DEJ, but those angles have to be the same because they're parts of similar triangles. So angle DEJ um, has to equal angle F prime OE. Um, since the, those two triangles are similar, JDE and F prime EO. And half of F prime OE, we, we showed was, was EGC. So, so EGC is equal to angle IGC. And so that means there's a symmetry so that if you reflect I over BC, it has to lie on EF prime. So basically K K is the reflection of I over BC. And since angle IGC is equal to angle EGC, K has to lie on EG by symmetry. And if K lies on EG, um, well, that means that F prime is actually F because F is where EK meets uh, the circle centered at O. And now we've essentially solved the problem because F prime is equal to F. And so clearly IOEF has to be cyclic. Uh, so this is a very cool problem. Um, a little trickier than I thought again, um, but I really enjoyed it. Uh, so if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more like this, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Uh, thanks, everyone.